Can anyone hear me? Just okay. Thank you. Okay. So um, my name is Stefan Kulo, and I'm the Open Zuse release man manager, uh, working for Zuse since I think 2002. So quite a while that I'm developing on these processes and, and factory and Open Zuse and Zuse. And but I would like to know who you are because. Uh, it was really the biggest variable I had when preparing this talk. So who of you knows or even develops uh, from time to time OpenSUSE? That's good because I actually prepared the talk mostly for those who, who do not. Uh, so I do have less slides than um, the previous presenter, but I have more time. So if you have questions, shoot them at me. I'm actually prepared. Uh, time for that. So, what is open through the tumbleweed? The question was already asked. Um, tumbleweed is a project that start was started uh, like four years ago by Greg Gh, who is who was then working for Zuse, but was from the start an, an, a free time project from from Greg. He put. Um, version updates of popular software on top of the latest um, OpenSUSE release. These versions are available in the OpenSUSE build service for everyone, but not in one repository. So we have one for KDE, one for GNOME, one for LibreOffice, one for the kernel, one for Devil, uh, for Python, for whatever. But tum Tumbleweed, st as started by Greg, was the first time that everything was in one repository and it was quite popular. Uh, when it was introduced. Um, sometimes people confused it with a rolling distribution because it was said that it's Tumbleweed 13.2, but it's actually not a rolling distribution as Wikipedia defines that term. Um, it is a rolling updates on top of the one stable core, while a rolling distribution is in uh, every software in that distribution changes on a rolling base. And so we reused that name as Tumbleweed is now obsoleted by the what we call so far factory. So what is open to the factory? Open to the factory has um, always killed the definition of a rolling distribution as every software changes all the time. There's no freeze, it's an ongoing development. But Wikipedia says that a development branch of a software is not a rolling distribution. So factory did not actually fulfill that role either, but we detached that development branch uh, mark from factory lately. But it, uh, factory is really the main, the biggest, the most defining project in the open to the build service. Most software that is on the open to the build service links directly or indirectly to this factory. So everything comes and goes, or most stuff in there um, is around open to the factory. Um, open to the factory is the base of both OpenSUSE releases and SUSE Linux Enterprise releases, but we are not we're not going there. It's not at some point we are at 13.1 and then we are at 13.2, but we forked off this ongoing development branch and then released that fork at some point. So it's really um, a distribution of its own in its own world. So it, it does not, it is, it has always been a development version as meant to be for developers, developed by developers, but it's, we, we removed, or we, we, we improved that. So it's, that's basically the, uh, sorry, I, it's, it's on battery, the laptop. Um, so that's why, that's what the talk is all about, that what, what we did in the last year. So the, how factory is developed in general is, as I said, something that 
I expect most of the audience not to know. So I'm. Uh, this is actually from the Wikipedia, uh, from OpenSUSE Wiki. This is not something I made for this talk. So you have the big blob factory, OpenSUSE factory in the build service, and then you have several development groups within the build service that develop their area of interest. You have the blue KDE team here and the green GNOME team and the uh, kernel guys there, and they develop in their own world. They have their own schedules, their own policies, their own uh, connection to upstream, and they submit things to factory, and basically my role is here. So I'm, I'm the gatekeeper of all these random crazy guys uh, and try to make a good house out of, out of it. Okay, so you're laughing, but it's... Uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just challenge. <laughs> so um, this development, <laughs> this development process worked quite fine. So everyone was doing what what he was doing on his own rules. Everyone tried to be gentle with others. No one tried to pour something on others, and <laughs> we. Yeah, it worked. It worked even for quite some years, quite well. We released OpenSUSE, and we um, no, no no animal was hurt during that. Um, but somehow, you always felt like there's some something is missing. And um, yeah, I, when I saw this picture, I, I, it's like most of these animated gifs are. Uh, connecting to factory somehow, but um, so the problem is the <coughs> development process that we that we lived was set up here. So don't don't mind the, the scale here. This is for scientists. Uh, so the the development process was set up when we were really young project. So there was this when we when we thought about how to set up this process. We had like six, seven of these development groups in mind. By now we have, I think, 108 of these groups. So we have, uh, these are contributors per week. So we have like a very active contributor space that on several things that are conflicting and that are not every of these contributors have full time uh, behind, their, behind their work. So we, we went into some trouble, and that trouble wasn't that obvious from the start, but um, the submissions to factory are possibly tested in the context of that development group. You have the kernel guys, they have the kernel from the upstream, and they, they, they even have testing somewhere upstream, but they submitted to factory, and suddenly, you notice VirtualBox does not build, Sen is not ported yet. Um, we had read just recently that TechLife no, no longer builds because it relies on the big bus handling of the kernel. So we, the problem of this integration is so complex that it's that the, that the, that you can't really expect upstream to 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 test that in the context of OpenSUSE. Um, but we have a lot of these untested uh, submissions. And again, when we set up this process, we were having 100 changes a week. And by now, we are happy if we have less than 700 changes a week. And all these are coming through that really poor Kulo here. <laughs> so um, So you have a lot of changes that come. You have to integrate them. You find a problem. You slow down. You say, OK, I, I can't accept any more changes. I have to debug what's going on, and I have to fix that. While you do that, it might take you two weeks, because it, it might be a complex issue. After these two weeks, you have uh, almost 2,000 changes pending that you have to integrate then. So you're 
finally fix that really critical issue and integrate another 3,000 submissions and mix it again. And then you figure that it does not work better than before. And so you have to start from scratch and you all day have to struggle with an always broken code base. So, but in the end, the, the whole process of reviews and integration and hey, um, depends on the packager being responsible and being, being, being responsive to, to the feedback. If you say there's something broken, then the random developer tends to claim that, it's, that it is not his fault, just like any developer. And, but with 2,000 changes coming at once, blaming one single developer is not possible usually. You can't say it's really your fault because you know I just integrated 2,000 changes and I think it's yours. Um, so the packager will most likely not feel responsible for having caused the mess or his upstream even. Um, but as I said, if you start at the end of the problem after the integration is done, you usually look at a, at a mess and you have no idea what, what went wrong. I could en enlist, and I guess every distribution maker can do that, enlist so many examples of things that look so different. So just to give you one example, the, our live CDs did not build any longer. And it was nothing obvious changed. So I tried to get the, the, the live CD maintainer looking at this problem and he said, I did not change anything. I can't be my fault. So I looked into the problem and it turned out that the live CDs try to calculate how much memory there is free and failed completely. So I looked and why is the calculation wrong? And in the end, it turned out that the math library used for BC had some bizarre bug uh, that was integrated into some other library triggered by that. So it was really completely unpredictable uh, that this would happen. Um, okay, again, you can ask questions. I'm so. As I said, we ran into a problem, and that problem kind of exploded, uh, I think, July, or in the summer of one and a half years ago. Um, no, two and a half years, two and a half years. So it's kind of, <laughs> so 12.2 um, was, was having a very similar problem to what I just described. Um, but the, um, we delayed 12.2 uh, for two months and fixed, that, fixed the problem for real, but we, we kind of figured that we could not continue um, yeah, delaying uh, <coughs> releases, but we have to do something for real. So we, for 12.3, we tried to, to have more people look at this problem. There's, um, uh, we, we created some factory maintainer that's responsible in all these development groups. So you get to get some 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 cross development group integration done. We uh, we increase the testing coverage for milestones and all that, but everything done with people <coughs> and everyone involved in that process said that we can't continue it like this either. So with for thirteen one we. Um, we invested in, in a tool called OpenQA that was there since 2009 or something. Um, but we really, we really put basically all, all our efforts um, into this tool to make the milestones tested by an automated tool. And for 13.2, we continued a bit with that, but we, sorry. But we mainly changed the 
the development process around this open QA so that we now can say open the factory is a rolling distribution and it is meant for users and it's no longer a development branch <coughs> and it can actually replace tumbleweed and so we reuse the, the name tumbleweed for the pro product out coming out of factory so this so the development process we still call factory and the outcome of this the product is called tumbleweed this is a distinction that people who reading who are reading KDE press releases will appreciate but for everyone else it's still very confusing but we are we're going there um, so the the users as we as we check our download statistics are really loving that open QA process they the tumbleweed as I said when it was started was really popular but it's kind of didn't really kick off. But when we really made factory usable for users, it was really interesting for us, for a lot of users, to really have tested rolling distribution from OpenSUSE. So it really, um, we, we see a lot of newcomers to this factory. So I'm really uh, hopeful that, we'll disco that, that this will continue. And for 13.3, that there's a, was a discussion on if we go back to eight months release schedule or if we do 12 months as we did for 13.2, but we still have not yet um, a roadmap for that. But we we are in discussion at SUSE to release the open to release the sources and the updates of SUSE Linux Enterprise into the build service, and then. Uh, do an, what do I say, hybrid release between the open SUSE factory packages and the SLU packages as a base and redefine open SUSE releases as they become, as we think, less interesting for users who want the newest versions. We give them some stable enterprise -y, uh um, this uh, release, but this is really a very fresh discussion and on how we do that and if we do it is still ongoing and it was just started. So. No, no, no. Factory is a rolling distribution on its own no schedule, just daily snapshots. And the open user release 13.2 and 13.3 uh, used to be forks from factory, but as forks from factory are not so interesting because they are daily forks of factory, we think that making open user releases more boring by having SLU based, sorry if I say that, in case <laughs> uh, enterprise developers are in the room, um, is is beneficial for 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 the open user user that does not want a daily version or version update. Um, okay. So now come we come to the real talk uh, about the new open user development process. Uh, the first thing I did. Uh, early last year was splitting factory into into rings. This is an, a discussion you find in several distributions actually uh, to, to split the distribution. So we have um, the <coughs> ring zero that is, is the bootstrap cycle. This is really um, where you can't pull out any of these packages without breaking any some other. It's uh, necessary to port all these packages to a new architecture to, to trigger a new, to port a new um, architecture. So we have 96 of them. I just read recently that Debian has a, a thousand in this uh, cyclic cycle. So other distributions have other packages. We have 96. On top of that, we have uh, ring one, 
that is not cyclic. It's really step you can, or we do bootstrap that all the time on top of the ring zero. Uh, that I includes a minimal X installation with all the tools required to build these. This is 900 or around 1000, this changes up and down a bit. And on top of that, we have ring two, which contains uh, QVD that has KDE and GNOME installations and Java and some other things. And then we have everything that is not in the ring, that is the rest of the factory, that currently consists of about 6,000 packages. And so we are limiting the impact on, on, on testing. So we say, we, if, if there comes a package, we know if it's in a ring, and if it's in a, in a ring, we can only, we only require to test that ring, and if it's not in a ring, we don't care. So this is not part of the, of the, sorry. This is not part of the tested base. This is uncovered base. So we created a set of staging projects. We have 11 at the moment. There's are just um, random, random letters as associated to that. Um, when the submit requests come into a factory, we pick one staging project and group, group the packages so they, they are integrated together. So if there's a new Perl, we put the Perl modules required for this new update, for this new version in the same project. If if a kernel is there and requires a new virtual box, we put the virtual box next to it. So we, so we, uh, these staging projects are what you would call uh, branches in, in in Git that you merge together into master when it's ready. Um, there are there are several information in this in this dashboard. There we have uh, reviews. That means the the, the sources are re review for policies. We have, let me go here. We have an installation check that checks the package on its own if it can be installed on factory. We have a legal review that checks if the license changed or if the li of the a new packages. Then we have staging projects that uh, have to rebuild, have to prove that all packages will build. We we test them. I come to that soon. We have then, when they are tested, we are waiting for the review to be done. And if they are acceptable, they can go into factory as, as a whole. Sometimes uh, reviews are declined and the whole staging project becomes unacceptable. Or we have a failure even by during building or during testing, so the whole staging project, I should have connected to power, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, so this is the, staging project. This means there is now a very important step between submit requests coming from the development group and acceptance to factory. That is, the submissions have to be, have to prove themselves before they can be integrated. So they, we have sometimes in here this problem with this broken car that we have to debug what, what is wrong, but if it's wrong in E, we only have the kernel to blame. And if it's wrong in C, we only have these packages to blame. And if it's some, some uh, KDE problem, you most likely, I think KDE is very unlikely to break with these packages, but um, you, you know, you, the, it's very, very much less of a problem to, to blame a problem to one of these packages than to 2,000 packages. And very often, if there's a problem we can't identify, we split the staging project. We say, okay, we take the, GPK, uh, the GNOME packages out of this, put them in another staging project, and see in which of these, stagings, of these new staging projects the problem appears. And then we have even more say um, about the problem, of the cause of the problem. So, and then these builds go to openqa, openzuzu.org, and are tested by an automated framework 
This is um, an, a tool mainly written in Perl that uses image matching and DNC connections to currently QEMU, but also have support for real hardware. And it will, it will look at the screen and press uh, keys and mouse buttons and wait for the CPU to become idle and all these things that a normal tester would do. And has uh, it's a bit fast here, but uh, <laughs> it's testing basically that all the basic tools work that you can install <coughs> and boot the system, that you can start Xterms, that you can log into SSH, that you can start Firefox and Chromium, that LibreOffice still works. Yes, you see it. It's, um, and we have eight of these tests running in parallel on opencreativeinstitute.org. And um, this creates a video of all tests. So if you really if you love to see open user installations, you can watch them all night long. Um, you have also a live view, which is even more interesting because it's sometimes, yeah. Um, but if you, if you would imagine, I would have to do this all the time uh, myself manually, I wouldn't do it. So this tool is really was a, a game changer to, to, to this whole process. So we could really say, okay, before this is not tested, it does not go in. But un before we didn't have these tools for, for automated testing, we could not require that. <coughs> so, sorry, again. So these, these staging projects uh, uh, have, se have several requirements. All the packages that are in ring have to build with this new package. This is mostly a problem for, for tool chains packages. Then we have seven, seven open QA tests per staging project. That is a minimal X, a KDE, a GNOME, a RAID 1 an encrypted LVM, which is very important because this, pack, this laptop runs scripted LVM and if factory would break, I wouldn't be able to show this presentation. So we test scripted LVM all the time and we test an update so that you can update from a previous factory to this new staging project and there's no bugs in software stack or, or uh, package dependencies. So. So this goes here to submissions, then it's also from BBC, by the way. Um, here's the submissions, then you have scripts reviewing the submissions, then you have this staging project open QA testing, then you have manual reviews, then you have factory integration process, and then you have another huge open QA process running. And uh, only after all this, it goes to users as tumbleweeds. So so this is the overall Tumbleweed dashboard. You have the staging project here. You can see the, the process there. You have the ring projects, which are uh, the unforked rings. Then you have the, error, the, the, the current state of factory himself. You see there are 29 failing packages out of 7,800, but these are all not ring uh, packages. Um, then you have the review queues for different teams. And here, this is the interesting part I wanted to show. Um, you have the source version, which is the, the date the last source change happened. This is, uh, in this case, it's all, it's all the same, but it's usually different. Then you have the snapshot currently in testing that, that built and was copied to, to testing. And then you have the last snapshot actually released. This is the snapshot passed testing and went out to users. And here you have the current open QA results. We have 102 tests running for the whole of Tumbleweed and two of them are failing at the moment, uh, which is really, really good from where we came from. Where am I? Uh, 11? Ah, fast. This means I have five minutes more. Okay. Hmm? Ten. 
20 minutes left. That's what I said. You should ask more questions. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Uh, no, Richard actually uh, created <laughs> Fedora <laughs> Pass. <laughs> no, uh, I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually what Richard just said. Um, I can explain OpenQ more. As I said, I, I did not know what doesn't is unknown to the audience, but the question was, uh, is OpenQ something specific to OpenSUSE or is there a generic framework? And the answer is, it is in a generic framework that runs tests on VNC, everything that can talk VNC. Um, and the tests are currently very, uh, uh, as we write them, are for OpenSUSE, but we have actually three repositories. One is the tool that runs QEMU, that is called OS Auto Int. Then you have OpenQA, which is the web UI for and the, the framework that starts the, the starts uh, systemd workers calling this tool. And then you have the OpenSUSE specific uh, tests. And there are um, there are now, since Christmas, uh, uh, Fedora tests for, for the new 21, I guess. And 22. And, 22. and since early this year, uh, Ludwig created some Android tests. So to, I think, Android x86, x86 I should say. Um, but it depends on, on, the, on the test you write. But the, the, the the, the possibilities with this tool are really, sorry. So this is the, so the, the, the branding is open source specific, but I hope you can uh, live with that. So here you can see um, that all the, we have, this is also something that might be open source specific and we just don't know it, but we have um, a machine, a distribution. This is um, where this ISO comes from, where you have an, a type, a so-called, uh, or also flavor com uh, at some points, where, where you can have live CDs or KDE live CD or GNOME live CD, which is then differently handled. You have the architecture, which also handled differently, and then you have the build number and the test suite uh, running, which is a collection of uh, single tests. And then you have the, the result. And I wanted to show something else here. So these are just a build overview, if it is finished loading, of the, of the latest Tumbleweed snapshot. We have tests for, for Crypt LVM, for X4, which is no longer the default file system for OpenSUSE. We have GNOME, we have GNOME on laptop machines, we have install only at, um, at uh, single, no, SMP. We have KDE, we have KDE on laptops, we have KDE with on these emulators on USB sticks. Um, LXDE, then we have the media check tested, the MEM test tested, and stuff like that. And it's all very, Perly, nice code, if you like Perl. Um, so this is what I mentioned. We have, we have, oops, we have OS Auto Int. We have OpenQA, the front end, and then we have um, the tests for OpenSUSE. So these different, on purpose, different repositories because you can plug in several other distributions there. And actually, there used to be tools. Uh, tests for Magea and tests for Fedora and tests for Debian, but as they are not maintained, we kind of stop them. Um, we 
are not there yet to answer that question. But this is something that we have to discuss if this if this should be possible or if this is yeah but in 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 general i would say that the branding and legal stuff the typical derivatives problems are still there so so we need to sort out uh, this but this as I, as i mentioned it's really too early in the process to, to answer that specific question but i wanted to show him uh, the test sorry uh, i will come back to you so we have For example, if you, he's, uh, you're, not long, you're, long, you're no longer looking. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an, uh, a test. You write your, the test itself just types clear on the command line and then runs super and then runs another script. And at the end, just a third screen, which requires a specific, um, uh, image met to be matched. So this this is um, this is an uh, these reference screens are very important detail now. That is this this is the welcome screen needle that has to match and this has to include this area and has to include this area. The version number down here does not matter to to assert the screen I'm on welcome. So this is really very, very generic, and I'm, I'm really, really looking forward for other distributions to, to maintain their test and help developing the, the tool in general. So now, please answer, uh, ask a question. So are you saying there wasn't like a test block for the screen welcome? It's just the initial screen that was created from the initial request? This is OpenQA, OpenSUSE.org is one machine. It's one machine for yeah. all the tests? For all these test goals. We have like a lot more to build the packages. Uh, this is, but not part of the OpenQA. This is all part of the OpenSUSE build service that everyone can use, and it has some machines. <laughs> so uh, we are we are in good times. We reach this 400 uh, CPUs. So. Um, so this brings us back to the question, if everyone can build his own SLES in this, theoretically, yes, but we would actually uh, scale down his CPU usage a lot. Uh, so I'm not sure it would ever finish. <laughs> so buy your own machines if you want to do that. Um, yes? Oh, sorry, I did not repeat the question. Oh. This is this is the sorry the question was if the if the tumbleweed QA step is also automated and this is the one I was trying to show here. This is the full set of tests for OpenQA. So the for for Stadium project we have seven tests on one architecture, and for tumbleweed we actually test both architectures uh, and. Uh, a lot more idols and a lot more uh, staging, but everything is automated. So, so you said that it's like a test block for the test server, so I guess if I have like a test block and I put in a test block for the server and other things, I can just like use the block block and then put it in the screen and then that will be the test block for the test server? Uh, yes. Yes. And also, we are very welcome. Uh, we are <coughs> welcoming people to do that. Oh my God! How to find the GitHub pages? I think there's a link here. So there is a. We have an, a, a how to on how to install OpenQA locally. Yeah, I just wanted to, to to see the render it, the render it version. So we have an installing guide, and we have a writing text uh, documentation. 
that might have gaps, but we are trying to document it. And we have people who manage to understand it. Uh, so, uh, and we have um, we have open through the factory on three nodes where we are discussed and uh, like to hear your questions. So I guess I'm really still early, but so then I, I think I have one final slide. Okay, thank you. Okay. <coughs> All right, this one. So um, as I said, we only release tumbleweeds when it's tested, which also means that if there's a problem, then we are not releasing it, which means we are not releasing a snapshot every day which some people already complained about that fact, uh, Tumbleweed is not really a rolling distribution because it does not roll all the time. But we are re releasing very, very often and we are only releasing reliable snapshots. So I think, and this is what most people agree to after complaining and explaining, uh, getting it explained, um, that, that it's often enough. So we have this done in this process since uh, the 1st of August something and in this time frame we released 40 and 54 snapshots I counted but there are weeks where we released one every day and then there are time frames where there's a problem that means we have 14 days without a snapshot and then after that again two weeks where we release every day so it's not you can't say every third day should be a factory, but it's always fresh enough, way more rolling than 32 or release or the old tumbleweed ever was. Um, so that I wanted to, to have a summary slide. So um, this, the staging project that we introduced is, was really helping a lot by to to isolate changes and to get developers actually feeling responsible for things they broke because they now have some playground to uh, to to hack in and integrate that change and the due to the automated testing we have see a steadily increased quality we actually track the known failures and we ha we used to have like 15 or 13 and we are down to only two failures and these are let's say quite bizarre corner cases uh, where the, the only the KDE lights really only on 32 bit um, start the X server on the wrong terminal when coming from Simlet and no one really understands that problem so we, we will fix that too at some point and after that we will never have any regressions again because uh, we know what changes broke it. And um, the 13.2 process, we released 13.2 in November, and we did not have a single alpha. We did not have more than one beta. So we had one beta, one release candidate, and after that it was final because we could trust the development process or the, 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 the quality of the, of the distribution every day. So that was basically the trick. So we only released these betas to get user feedback and it worked well, well worked well that i would summarize this whole talk about so are more questions yeah the, the one behind you yes sir the question was is there a security is there is a fast lane for security updates and that's actually a very good point because we had the, the best shell call check sh shell shock bug exactly in that time frame. And we had to create an uh, update. We were previously uh, sure that factory will, of will release often enough to not be a problem. But that bug hit exactly in that time frame. So we have a si an online update repository for security updates for factory, but we never used it besides the best. 
And now your question? So the question is, how long does it take to, 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 to use OpenGA? Um, this OpenGA is actually scalable. We have, you can plug in more machines in that. And depending on what you test, um, it takes, let's see if I can have that information here. So this is a KDE test. That took uh, 49 minutes. So you have per test roughly an hour, and we have eight of them. So we have so the whole tumbleweed is 102 tests. So it's roughly like six hours, seven hours. We could add. That's what I said. We could we could add more machines if we wanted to, and. It, if, the, if the architecture is slower, or if you test more, then obviously you have to ask for more. But the 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 QEMU, uh, the KVM is really not a problem. So this is let's see if I can load that. So this is more the the, the typical speed. This this animal this was uh, was was sped up. So it was really. Um, it will click and press the key as soon as you see the key for screen, so it's really fast moving. But the whole installation takes a while. That's nothing OpenGL can fix. So what we are doing is playing tricks. We install uh, with Eat My Data on Pampas app. Um, so it's really throw away um, installation. But the but yeah. We have we have some other instance with with three workers or four even, um, and there we have no. We can even test even more. So um, no, no. Open Google is comes with uh, x86 and x64, and there are ports to. Power 64 and um, 7. Uh, not, not yet, I think. So there are uh, at least three ARM uh, platforms and at least one power uh, platform as well. And Freeze also supports uh, SD90. <coughs> so, but no MIT, no M68K or whatever they bring. The question is, if we test for dependencies, if a new package requires something we don't want, is it correct? Yeah. Um, so we test that the rings, that the packages in rings are satisfied by other ring packages. So if a package is outside of, of the rings, we don't care for its dependencies. We only care, sorry, I have to stop this here. It's disturbed me a bit. Um, so we only test if a package has all its dependencies also in factory before it ends up in factory. And we test that ring packages have all the dependencies in rings before we accept them into factory. <coughs> uh, we don't. There's no automated way, I think, you can test for unwanted dependencies. So that's. I the the OSP uh, the OS the OBS always builds in an in a minimal environment. So if. So the open build service always sets up. A, a virtual machine with only the declared build dependencies. They are not. Uh, 
Yeah, as I said, you said unwanted dependencies, and I'm not yeah, sure I'm how to define unwanted. unwanted. Yeah, but it, um, again, we, are, we have the, the dependencies within rings are verified by, by having one script that runs against the submission. And everything outside of rings is generally uninteresting to me, and the rings is kind of a natural habit to do packages. And um, yeah, sometimes, uh, for example, KDE, Packages tend to be splitted and then merged together and then have a new dependency on some new game or whatever. But this is, you th they are depend on the, the KDE package has to actually know what they are doing. And I don't have an automated way to say this is unwanted. I mean, but it's just. As people write test cases, we can expand <coughs> them, but I don't have any plans for that. I'm done? Okay, then. Yeah, okay, then.